Good morning. This is Robert Lord coming to you guys again on this Sunday morning. Appreciate you guys tuning in. Uh, again, this is the Think Up podcast, episode number five. I appreciate all you guys' support. Uh, thank God for this. Uh, you know, this is just content that I really believe our coaching needs right now. Uh, you know, thank God for everybody putting out something that can really bless and empower people. It's like every time you turn on the news, every time you turn on, you know, uh, any type of uh, yeah, news outlet, there's always something negative happening. So I believe uh, our culture is going to be healed as every individual take full responsibility and become all God has called them to be. So with this Think Up podcast, that's my intent is to help you become all God is calling you to be, become the highest expression of who God is calling you to be. So this is episode number five. And today I'm going to be coming from you, uh, coming for you on the subject of the height of your vision is intertwined with the depth of value you have in yourself. And we're talking about how your value and what you believe about yourself is connected to your vision. You know, I learned this a couple of years ago by the grace of God, that you can only see as far as you believe yourself to be valuable. You can only see as far as you believe yourself to be valuable. So prayerfully, this content will add, add value to your life. If you like it, please subscribe to my YouTube channel uh, and go in and like it. If you have any questions, anything, please send me an email at Robert L. Lowry, L-O-W-E-R-Y at, oh, I'm sorry, Robert L. Lowry 3 at gmail.com. All right, guys, so we'll get right into it. Uh, so the first thing I want to do is, uh, again, the content uh, primarily is coming from my new book that should be out in the next couple of months called Think Up to Get Up, How to Break Free from Destructive Ways of Thinking. Uh, let you guys know when that comes out. We're just going to read an excerpt from it. Uh, this is the chapter I have that's dealing with vision. I just want to read that and then just cover a couple of points. And then probably you guys uh, who go to church can get on off the church. All right. OK, so Earl Nightingale. Uh, he is uh, one of the he's pretty much one of the guys who pretty much founded the motivational speaking uh, area. He, you know, he started way back, I believe, in the 50s. But it's a speech that he did that dealt with two alcoholics. Just want to read it to you guys and then we can uh, and dive into it. As Earl Nightingale in his speech, The Strangest Secret, told the story of two boys who were raised by an alcoholic father when they became adults. Uh, they were interviewed by a psychologist who were studying the effects of drunkenness in the home. One did not drink and the other was an alcoholic like his father. Both were asked why did they turn out the way that they did and both gave an identical answer. What do you expect when you have a father like mine? When I heard this story, it confirmed the uncomfortable truth, which is you choose to allow your past experiences to keep you down or build you up. Choose the latter. Our past has the ability to give or take away your value depending on how it's perceived. The son who chose to become an alcoholic allowed his bad past experience to minimize the value he has in himself. When this happens, there is no other result but to repeat what you see. The second son uh, which uh, I'm sorry, the second son chose to allow his bad past experience to empower him by refusing to respond to life's difficulties with the body. People rise to new heights because they believe they can and people struggle all of their lives because they do not believe they are valuable enough to break free. And uh, that's just a little excerpt from the new book that's coming out, Think Up to Get Up, How to Break Free from Destructive Ways of Thinking. And this story is, is real interesting. It's a real popular story. I'm pretty sure you may have heard it before. Uh, Earl Nightingale, he the one who presented it to the world way back in the 60s. But it just tells a story of two people who goes through the same exact situation, the same circumstance. One sees his father drinking and say, hey, that's all I see. So I'm going to become an alcoholic. And he even got defensive. Like, what do you expect? What do you expect when all I'm seeing is somebody gulping the bottle? The other son had that same exact experience and said, and he, I'm sorry, he got defensive and said, what do you expect? I'm not going to be nothing like my father. I'm never going to drink again. It's amazing, y'all, how we can go through bad experiences. 
situations, you know, many of you guys, we all been through, we all got a story, but it's the person who refuses to allow that story to define you in a way that minimizes your value. And I pray that, uh, you know, something spark in your spirit that whatever you went through in your past, that may, that may be limiting your value, causing you to see yourself as a lesser than, that it be broken free. But I believe in order to break free, it first got to be exposed. I know for me, I didn't know I had small value in myself, but my my small value in myself was being expressed by having an uh, inferiority complexes, thinking that certain people were better than me. Uh, and, and for me, I began to have that mentality when I was young, didn't know what it was. I just, you know, I just thought it was normal. And it's amazing, y'all, how we can go through things and see things that's destructive and think they're normal because we're too immature. But as we grow older and we realize, OK, well, that way of thinking is wrong. But we still have these beliefs, these hidden ideas about ourselves that keep us down. And I believe in our culture, 2021, this is the time to break free from that. And I believe you don't break free by getting angry, by pointing the finger. It starts with pointing the finger at yourself and say, OK, I believe this about myself and I need to break free from that. I believe that you're only going to break free when you take full responsibility of what you have full responsibility of. You don't have full responsibility over somebody else apologizing. You don't have full responsibility of somebody else believing in you, but you can believe in yourself and you can manifest everything that God is calling out of you by first believing who you are and believing who God is. I want to read you guys Proverbs 28 chapter. Uh, and uh, I'm going to start. Oh, let me pull it up right quick. In the 28th chapter. And. Oh, man. Leave the 28th chapter. OK, I get back to that. Don't lost the, the verse I want to read. Uh, but we gonna come back to that. But the word of God tells us. That, you know, him without a vision, the people perish. But I want to read it in this version. It says, he who without a vision, he throws off restraint. I'm going to pull it up. But when you have a vision for yourself and a vision for your life, it forces you out of the box. You know, your vision for yourself is always going to be connected to what you believe about yourself. Think about it. When you have a small value in yourself, your vision tends to not be much bigger than that value. Let me read you guys this. It's the same way as a building, right? Look at it like this. A building can only be built as high as the constructors dig deep. They can't start building anything high until they dig deep. It's a famous building. I forgot what state it's in. But this building, I think they were supposed to go down, drill down, like, I think like 2000 feet in order to build this, you know, this crazy tall building, but they only went down 800 feet. Well, the building is built and I think it's still up today. And a person who was standing, it's like a, you know, a famous condominium, the guy, he actually dropped the marble and he noticed when the marble dropped, it just rolled to the other side of the room. And he did some research and found out that that building that he's staying in, he bought a condo in for millions of dollars, that they didn't dig deep enough. They did a study on, I think it's a 60 minute story. You guys can go and research it. They did a study and they found out that it's cracks and the building is leaning. That's how our life become. When you don't go deep enough, we can build high. And man, let me tell you, that building looked good. But when you don't dig deep enough, when you get to the height that you believe you can get to, you start to lean. And that's why, y'all, you have to let go of the limiting beliefs you have about yourself and in order to embrace the full vision that God has for you. I want to read you guys another quote. You must disconnect from the identities that your past put on you to embrace your true identity God is calling you to become. I think David is a real good example of this. You know, when he went to go fight Goliath and he went to go bring food to his brothers, which was instructed by his dad, you know, they was getting on him saying, why are you here? Why are you, 
you know, you just trying to see, you know, they was trying to say all these things as if he's trying to do something wrong. But then when he heard what the, if he killed Goliath, what he can get out of it, he rose up. He was like, oh man. Well, first of all, when he heard Goliath speaking negative against the children of Israel, he said, who is this? He was offended. You got to get offended when people try to minimize your value. And when I say offended, I don't mean get angry and fight back. I mean, just like this young man did, he didn't get frustrated. He didn't get all mad, but he chose not to become what his past was trying to label him. I believe that's the best way to respond to your situation, y'all. Not to get angry, not to post about it, not to try to blast people or cancel them like our cancel culture, but be all God has called you to be. That's what I'm striving to do, y'all. You know, like even me writing this book, like, to be straight up with y'all, it took me about three or four years to believe in myself enough to write the book. I told myself everything you can tell yourself. I'm not smart enough. I can't write. I don't like to read. Uh, I don't want to write. It's too hard. Nobody going to listen to it. Uh, and the majority of the things were true, but it just kept coming out of me like, man, I need to write this book. I need to write this book. And as I began to write, man, it really started blessing me in the content I started writing about. Y'all, this book is I, I pray it bless you guys. That's why I want to give the content away for free, because I think our culture need this. We need to think above our circumstances. I think especially us in the black community, we focus too much on how we were done wrong. And let me tell you something. Yes, racism exists. Yes, people ain't for you. And yes, it may be harder for us to succeed. But I like E.T., the hip hop preacher. He said, I'm still going to be a millionaire. I'm still going to be the top motivational speaker in the world. I don't care what limitations somebody else put on me. It ain't going to stop me. And that got to be your attitude. You can't allow what people say about you to stop you. You can't just get angry and respond with your emotion. Get angry enough to change. Get angry enough to say, I'm going to still get my education. I'm going to still write that book. I'm still going to start that business. I'm still going to be all God is calling me to be and nothing less. And I pray that's the mentality that you guys develop. And that's why I started this podcast. I'm coming to you guys every day because this content I'm covering, y'all, this is who I am. I, I can cover this every day and I don't know how long I'm going to do this, but I'm serious about embracing everything that God has for me, for me and my family and nothing less. I want everything. And you guys got to have that attitude. You can't allow people to speak death over you. And this is what I mean. Respond to the people who ain't for you by being for yourself. You ain't got to say nothing. You ain't got to you know, send messages. You ain't got to, you know, uh, speak out the side of your mouth. Listen, respond by being all God has called you to be. And I really love this quote right here. Uh, and this quote is in the book, Think Up to Get Up. You will rise to the level you believe you belong. You will rise to the level you believe you belong. Where do you belong? You got to have an attitude like, listen, I belong on the top. I belong in uh, starting my business. You got to have a, a attitude like, I belong here. If you don't believe you belong on the level God is calling you, unfortunately, you're not going to have the fight. You're not going to have the resilience. You're not going to uh, have the patience. You're not going to seek the face of God enough to really get an answer and wisdom and strategy to embrace that. You got to believe you belong, y'all. You got to believe it. And you got to express that with your actions, not what you say, not what you tweet, not what you tell everybody else and put on your, uh, what is that called? The vision board. It can start there. But let me tell y'all something. It got to leak over into your character. You have to, you have to believe that, listen, I belong in my greatness. God is calling something great out of every single one of you. You would not embrace it if you minimize your value and connect it to what people think about you or connect it to bad past experiences that you had. So, y'all, I'm going to start there. I pray this content bless you. I'm be coming to you guys tomorrow. Uh, again, the height of your vision is intertwined with the depth of value you have in yourself. The height of your vision is intertwined with the depth of value you have in yourself. 
You will only build as far as you believe yourself to be valuable. So your value is connected to how dig you dig deep, you know, and uh, and, I, and I'm saying this so many times, you know, uh, this content, everything is coming from what God gives me from the word of God. You know, I believe for me, digging deep first start with having a relationship with Christ. You know, I turned my life over to Christ in 2008 and it blessed me and he changed my mind. So I pray that you make a decision. You know, uh, some of you guys may not be believing. I think God is really calling many of you and that's why you're watching this content. Uh, God is calling us to, to, to embrace everything he has for us. And uh, I want to realize what he has for me and my family. I don't want nothing less and nothing more. I don't want somebody else's blessing. I don't want to look blessed. I don't want to look anything. I want to be. And this is the season for us to be, to become, to be all God is calling you to be, not just a version of it. That's why I say uh, I, I want to empower and help people become the highest expression. The highest expression become all God is calling you to be and nothing less. So I pray this content bless you guys. Have y'all selves a great day and I see y'all tomorrow. Thank you.